today we will be doing a newborn assessment. The first part of your newborn assessment is to obtain your vital signs. We want to get our heart rate first before we unwrap the child and make them cold or before we disturb the child and make them start to cry. So we want to try and tuck our stethoscope in under the clothes against the skin and try and get our heart rate without disturbing our child in unwrapping. Once we get our heart rate, we can then move on to do the rest of our newborn assessment. Unlike an initial assessment, when we're doing our daily assessment, we want to keep the child as covered as possible. We are not going to strip them down. And we're going to work just like on our adult from the head to the foot. We're using an overbed table strictly so that we can visualize what we're doing. Normally, you would be doing your assessment with the child in their crib. You want to stand at the foot of the crib looking directly onto your child so that we can judge symmetry as we're doing our assessment. We're going to start at the head. So you would remove your child's hat and you'll pick your child's head up in your hands. You're going to feel all around your baby's head with your hands and you're looking for any soft, squishy spots. They can be one of two things. We can have a cephalohematoma or just strictly cap it. We're going to take our thumbs, we're going to find the front suture lines, and we're going to follow them up to the front anterior fontanelle. We want it to be level with the child's head. We don't want it sunken in or bulging. We are then going to take our fingers in the back and we're going to find the back suture line and follow the front anterior fontanelle to the posterior fontanelle. If your child is over 24 hours old, you may not find your posterior fontanelle as it's the first to close. Once we determine that the head is symmetrical, round, with no bulging or protruding areas, we then want to look at our face. You want to draw an imaginary plus across the center of the nose and see that everything lines up in the same quadrant. As nurses, we do not look at the eyes for the red reflex. We do, however, want to assess if we have an increased amount of swelling of the eyelids, bruising, if we have any other type of facial bruising, discoloration, if we have normal newborn rash across the nose, or if we have any other interesting characteristics about the face. Once we get to the eyes, we want to move to the nose. With one finger, you're going to hold one nostril closed to see if the child has any type of distress. And then we're going to do the same to the other. We're trying to determine if we have a patent airway or if we have a blocked or congested airway. We're then going to move to the ears. We want to take our ear and fold it forward and watch for the spring back. Children that are premature or less than 37 weeks will have a slow to a non-existent spring back. We are also looking for the pinna to make sure we have a well-rounded pinna. And we also want to check both sides to make sure that they're identical. While we're here, we want to assess to see if our ears are in the proper alignment. So we draw an imaginary line from the corner of the eye to the ear as if the child were going to wear sunglasses. This helps us to determine if we have low or high set ears. Low set ears are one classification of possible Down syndrome. Next we're going to move to the mouth. We need to assess several things about the mouth. We need to make sure we have an intact palate that we have no teeth, blisters, and what the suck is. You're going to insert one gloved finger into the baby's mouth. 
you're going to take your finger and run it across the upper roof of the mouth from the soft palate to the hard palate, then run your finger around each gum line, and then have the child suck on your finger. We'll now move to the next phase of the assessment.